Hi everybody, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today I'm going to take you on a room tour slash how I organize, sort of. <laughs> and just a forewarning, I'm not going to clean, just to show you guys my disaster. <laughs> So let's uh, come into the room and I'll show you how everything's set up, you know, the behind the scenes and how it works and so on and so forth because, yeah, <laughs> it's a disaster in here by my standards, I guess. <laughs> so let's go on a tour. So we're going to go to my quilting room. This is the door. It has a bunch of sayings on it. Set your goals high and don't stop till you get there. Believe you can and you are halfway there. Do it now. <laughs> Be your own kind of beautiful. And dream is a wish that the heart makes. Nothing about quilting, just, you know, fun. So let's enter my room. Oh my goodness. What a space. So here we are in my room. And the first thing you see when you walk in here is bright lights. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't know how that's going to affect the camera. So you see pictures on the walls and there's literally a lamp right when you walk in the room. <laughs> and tons of stuff. Here is my ironing board. It needs to be recovered, as you can tell. But we're just going to do a quick pan of the room and then we'll just, you know, go through everything. So this is my space. Bright lights. So when you are watching me on a video, I'm usually on this side. So this is the more cleaner side of the room and you usually see me over here doing my thing. <laughs> and then I iron over here. So let's start with ironing board. The ironing board is a custom made ironing board. It is actually a regular ironing board and let's go underneath so you can see it. It is a regular ironing board that we took a plywood and bolted it on to the top. So I recover it every now and then. As you can tell, I iron most in this section right here, but it's time for a recovering. Here's a project I just finished. This is a client's project and there is my recent filming. Kind of just sits on the ironing board until I put it away. Here are my mini quilts. And then over here, my daughter got that for me. So I hang it in here because it is butterflies. And if you guys don't know yet, I love butterflies and the color purple, which explains my miniature stars. These are my twinkle twinkle little stars. I have yet to do a video, but I will get to it sooner or later. I made that in a video. That was my first little art collage quilt. And then there's a little miniature star quilt and then that one I if you haven't noticed have a few irons this is my favorite is very heavy this is the reliable um, compact vapor generator it's a velocity sensor so when you touch the handle it turns the steam on I love a steam iron and then down here on the floor we have the ones that Scott kind of bounces through <laughs> all right so let's go under the ironing board under the ironing board is patterns that I have a thing for that I haven't done yet. We have some things filled with fabric that I haven't touched in years. I kind of just threw them in here. And I have a ready cut project sitting here. I have stuff I need to start and piles of dust. Why? Because I really don't grab anything off of the shelf very often. <laughs> Next to that, I have some bolts of fabric because I ran out of room, so I have to put them somewhere. So I keep my bolts of fabric under here. A lot of these are just solids and my um, Maywood Studio bolts and some Waverly and yeah. And if you're curious about that line, this is aged to perfection, if you can tell. I have quite a few of them because I really love that line. I have it in yellow as well. Um, Next is this little stackum thing. This has stuff that I work on off screen, just little projects in here that I just grab and have something to sew off screen. Some of it's been donated to me. Some of it 
is just things that I've been working on and I just kind of put them in these little bins. Then we have my bolt of white and bolt of gray that I just opened but I haven't cut anything from. I actually got those from Marshall Dry Goods so I was trying out a new kind of fabric and this stuff is amazing. I actually like it a lot. Then I have a, this basket that's hiding back here. Oh, this is a project too. Huh? This basket is all flannel scraps. It's actually overflowing and boxes on top help keep it closed. Those are my tags and I forgot what's in here because I don't get in here often. Oh, that's another project that I've been slowly working on. <laughs> and then this is neat scraps. Um, I'll get to that in a bit, but it, pretty much they're neat scraps because they're folded neatly and all pressed and ready to be cut down into other other scraps. And this is my um, four star general that I've been filming. That's that. I gotta get to filming some more of that. So that's what's under the ironing board. And then when we move to behind me where everybody sees, I have these uh, dresser things. And inside the drawers are, the top one is thread. So these are my grab and go threads. I do, I am not picky about thread. I use whatever I can get thread. It doesn't matter. I like coats um, and Guterman and you know, like all sorts of stuff. Superior threads. I like it all. I'm not very picky about my thread. As long as I have a ton of colors and I can match things up. The second drawer is a whole stack of red, white, and blue uh, Americana fabric that I got on sale at Walmart. I haven't even taken these fat quarters out, but I do like this brand at Walmart, the Emma and Mila. Ooh, focus. Um, I like this brand, so I definitely am going to be making something with this. Also in here are more threads, some Arafil and some King Tut and some Missouri Star thread. And these are all ones that most of them haven't been opened, so they're still, you know, in their wrappers. Then in the next drawer, I have junk. <laughs> this is food fabrics mixed with panels that I meant to make something with and do little applique projects. I just haven't done it yet because, well, do we ever get to everything that we have? I got them a long time ago when I started quilting. The next one is more neat scraps, so they're set in piles of color matching, the scraps that go together. I pull from these when I make bags or wallets or anything like that, I pull from these. Then the next one is some more neat scraps. Again, a neat scrap for me is I press it when I get it and then I fold it up and depending on its size, it has a drawer that it goes in. So my drawers are pretty much now, you know, full, but there's lots of fabric in here. And then the next one, this is some more scrap stuff. And these are brushed cotton scraps. And then I also have like quilt blocks in bags that were cut from panels that are really cool that I would like to make an old quilt out of. As you can see, these are super old fabrics. You know, they're Sunbonnet Sioux ones, and they're already pre-cut for me. I cut them already into squares so that I can make something. And again, lots of old, this is more of the older stuff in here mixed with my um, music fabric. And then the bottom one is fat quarter bundles that I get from like Tuesday morning or places like that. I haven't gotten fat quarter bundles from Tuesday morning in a really long time, but that's where I used to get them. So I just have a bunch of little bundles in here. And then let's go to the bottom drawer of this one. This one is all jelly roll strips. So these are sets of jelly roll strips that can be sewn together and make, you know, one single project if I, you know, get the time. And then underneath it is blocks that are, you know, orphan blocks are buried under here. And then, the next drawer is mixed small. These are small, uh, neat scraps. So they're just smaller pieces compared to the ones in the other drawers. So they're like, you know, 12 inches or less. If I can get it to close. Then we have some mixed flannels and brushed cottons in here. And that one. 
The next one is little projects that were started and little pieces of fabric that I kind of just threw in here, you know, leftovers from stuff. Got to have somewhere to put it. And then the next one is all of my black and white scraps, black, white, and red actually, from making my Dresdens that I made a couple months back. I made some extra ones that were made with black, white, and reds. And grays. There's grays in there too. And then we have my Panasonic iron. I keep the cover on it because this room gets super dusty. And then underneath this that Becca has crocheted is where I keep mail things that were sent to me, like cards and, you know, things like that. I don't want to show too much because it has addresses. So I just keep that covered because on live stream you never know who's watching. Up here I keep my little quilt caddy, quilty caddy here. Some markers. I like my fabric markers, the tulip ones especially. They do uh, go dry fast though if you color, color with them constantly on fabric, but... I have my rotary cutter, so this one is my main one I use when I'm left-handed, and then this is the second one. These ones I don't use much, as you can see, because they're covered in dust. <laughs> then I have a paper one and a 28 millimeter one. That is for, like, cutting things that are small. Then I have some rulers here on the wall. Lots of rulers, and then I have my Karen K. Buckley scissors just hanging there. These are my go-to ones when I'm cutting out for, with my bags, and I do the zipper, and I need to cut the little small angles. I do it with this because these are like super sharp and pointy. More rulers. These are just most of the, most of my rulers are in a different area, but these are just my grab ones and things that I don't use often. Here's my quilt stuff. This is from a fan some awards, here's my postcards, here's a bunch of little knick-knacky things, it's my little tiny knick-knack shelf that just everything gets thrown on. Up there is also a knick-knack shelf that I also have some um, jelly rolls and a six inch bundle of the Tonga treats. And then again a fan made me those letters for Tiffany's Quilting Life. The L is hard to see because it's got stuff over it. Then here's a quilt that I made that I hang all my postcards from. I use little tiny clothespins to hang my postcards up. So I have postcards from all sorts of places. And then right here, this award does not go with this quilt. I just hung it here because the quilt that it goes to is way too big to hang on the wall in here. And sorry for the blinding. All right, we're going to move down here. Here's my Juki TL2010Q. I love this thing. Oh, I forgot. This rest of this side down here. That's my brother SQ9285. I love that too, but not as much. That is that is the Ford Pinto and this is the Ferrari. <laughs> uh here I keep patterns that I have you know, I scribble down measurements, and sometimes I forget to even write on it what it is, and then I throw them in a stack right here. Uh, underneath, I keep some my June Taylor cut and press things. Those really suck, but I have them anyway, because in case I need them, I have them. Uh, my sew-along blocks are in this right here. I do have a big ruler here. I have a little design board that I made right there. Brushed cotton actually works really well for design boards. So, and don't use it much in quilting, but it definitely works for design boards. And then under here, I keep all of my interfacings. I buy them interfacing by the bolt. And I have my foam, and I keep all the scrap interfacing that's big enough for, you know, other projects inside this basket. Um, I do have ruler and a, another cutting mat there. I pull out this cutting mat when I'm cutting like batting scraps or when I'm cutting um, flannel or minky because I really don't want to ruin my other boards so I use that one. Then under this side of the desk where you guys never see and I'm always kicking something, I keep a trash can. My foot pedal to the machine, I have to keep it against something so there's a piece of flannel behind it. But if we go under here, I have more drawers. we got to remove this so that I can show you. So under here, this drawer is junk. Lots of miscellaneous junk. I do have a pile of dust right here. See that? Look at all that dust. 
These are my snail trail blocks, but I'm making snails at sea, and I just haven't, you know, finished them. I've been working on it slowly. In here is uh, half yard cuts and matching fabrics. Everything under here is kind of scattered. Here's all of my zippers, zipper tape, and regular zipper stuff. In all these, I keep stuff for bag making and elastic, which I don't use very often, but I should because I want to make clothes. And then I keep pins and rubber bands in there. And then this is more bag making supplies. I do pull from these drawers. And then more zippers. Under here I have some So Yeah quilting boxes that have thread in them. This is some, uh, so stars like this are in here that just need to be finished being put together. And then here is under a yard cuts. This drawer barely closes because this is in here really tightly. I'm trying to fill these drawers as best as I can. And then down here is some quilt tops that are made from sheets and from silk and sheets and fabric that need to be quilted up. And then over here is some more under one yard pieces. And then here's my one yard and half yard. So there's some half yards here and some one yard cuts. Those are from So Yeah bundles. And then here is some poly cotton blends in this drawer. I also under here, my daughter gave me this. It's really hard to get it out, but it's a little thing to put thread in. Um, I don't grab from it very often because it's buried under here. And then also under here, I keep my strings. So I have this big, huge bin plum filled with strings and they're neatly in here too. I'm very OCD about how my fabric is trimmed, cut, and put away. I don't know why, I just am. So that's how I keep my strings. And we're gonna move on up. Inside my drawer is just paperwork, shipping stuff, my free motion gloves, some markers, cleaning things. Then this top one, I keep washi tape. I have lots of washi tape. I actually use it for packaging. I keep stamps, more paperwork, a stapler. I keep little tiny pins in case I need them. I keep my needles, uh, my rotary blades, all in that drawer, some with some paperwork. So here's on my desk. Back here, I keep, you know, the brush to clean the machine. I keep a roller, the screwdriver. It's all in like a coffee mug. Here's my thread bin. I keep some bobbins here, and I keep the bobbin keepers on them. And then back behind, I was making something yesterday, so that's there. Then I have another quilty caddy that has got a project that I need to put together on it, as well as bobbins and then my friction pins and some rulers. I also have some rulers and all the, oh my goodness, what are these called? Rivets, my rivet putting together stuff. I keep my machine oil, some pins. There's tons of pin packages back here. I don't pin very often, but when I do, they're right there. Scissors. I do have a radio that's hidden back there. I just hit the button and it turns it on. It's only on one station because it doesn't pick up much. <laughs> then that's a chalkboard that my daughter got me. It's a quilt block chalkboard, which you can't really totally tell because I have a little tiny... Anytime I need a rotating mat, I have one. A little tiny thing. Um, back here I have another ironing board and some vinyl and then a project bag, and then back down there is some more vinyl. On this back side of the desk, here is the can that I keep all of the scraps from videos, the, like the little cutoffs. Those go in there. Those are not usually usable scraps. Here's the usable scraps. So I've been putting them in piles back here. Every time I make a quilt, they go into this before I iron them and fold them and put them into a different drawer. Um, so... I'm just going to kind of keep going. In this bin right here is my pre-cut 10-inch squares, but right now uh, I kind of overflowed. There's one, two, three bins back there, and then it's overflowing. And technically there's four because there's one underneath there too. Those are all full of things that I've currently 
recently just made projects of. They go in there. All right, moving on. Back here, I have bolts of fabric. Then I use comic book cards. So that's these things right here. Let's pull it out so you can see. They're called magazine boards. I buy the eight and a half by 11 inch ones and I bolt up the fabric. So this is all of my batiks. So for organization part of this video, every single one of these are marked with what's on it. So here is a yard on this one. And if you move here is two yards and it's two cuts of the same fabric. You know, this one is three yards, 29 inches. I do not wrap more than five yards on these because then they start bowing and bending really bad. So I put the five yard cuts on bolts for any of my fabric. Moving on up, I have patterns in this, like clothing patterns in this tub. I have variegated thread spools in here and then super bright colorful thread spools in here, some jelly rolls some layer cake. These are half layer cake bundles. Then I have my six inch strips. I love these things and I've been hoarding them, really literally hoarding them. I've made a few projects with them, but when Tuesday morning had these, I bought them out because I really loved these things. I loved them so much. My daughter even bought some too, not just for me, but for herself. She, so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. there's nine of them left. <coughs> Next shelf up is all of my layer cakes. These are the full layer cakes. And then some of them are layer cakes that I've made and or nine inch um, squares because sometimes I can't get a 10 inch square out of something, but the whole line I was able to get nine inch squares from. All right, moving on. Oh, and here is also batiks down in there. That's also batiks in here as well as batik jelly rolls and batik fat quarter bundles. And same with this one. This is all batiks. Oh, and some embroidery hoops, like for hand embroidery or, you know, hand quilting or something. Uh, moving on up here is, these are regular fabrics. These, I don't keep my fabrics in order of uh, color or what it is. I just throw it on the shelf and I say, oh, I like this red and white polka dot and that's what I'll grab. These are also marked two yards, one yard, one yard, five inches. I only bolt up one yard up to five yards. After five yards, it goes on a regular bolt. Then up there, I have my little Rowenta iron. I have some cards. I actually have a, um, oh my God, I can't think of it right this very moment project. I have mail stuff that goes up there, things that people have sent me, pretty cards and things like that over the years. I have some candy up there. I have a timer because I was for a while setting myself a timer, you know, on how long I'd stay in here and cut. And even further up there, I had this, I don't have anything in there because it kept breaking. So my son actually fixed the leg on it, but I just keep it up there as like decoration as well as my old spools of thread. There's really old spools in here. And then um, sewing machine parts for brother machines in this one. And then there's a kit up here. There's more kits here, here, up here, 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 kits of things. They're not just, uh, this is for like bags and stuff. So, and miscellaneous, I've been throwing it all up there. And there's more fabric. This is all more children's novelty up to about right here. And then the rest of it is like adult and children novelty kind of mixed, as well as my Liberty Lane kit. Then the next shelf has some um, folders at the end, and this is all solids. And then right here where this piece is right here, this separates the poly cottons. So the poly cottons are great for like inner bag linings and um, for wallets and such like that, but I don't use them for anything else. I just use regular cotton. Uh, and those are organized sort of by color. That's probably the only thing that's in color. Then next, well, these are my storage bins and we'll get back to these because this is definitely part of the organization part of this video, but let's move on. So down here I have batik scraps and batik scraps down in these two tubs. And then back behind here, I actually have a quilting, hand quilting hoop that I got. It's a big one as well as some red, white, and blue scraps mixed with 
I mean, there's all sorts of scraps back there and those things. I just, you know, at the moment, I'm not going to pull them out. Then here is more scraps that I don't have any drawers for. So they're in a basket as well as some vinyl. In there is a, a 10 month quilt kit. And then underneath is more neat scraps, <laughs> like literally. And I'll move that out of the way so that you guys can see my organization in a minute. Here on this little shelf thing is, I've been using it to throw stuff on it, as well as my serger sits on here. <laughs> um, here I keep my bags, I just hang them. This I was for the longest time hanging quilt tops from it to show you guys in videos, but now I don't use that for that. And then I keep fat quarter bundles on the top. So I got my Tula and my Free Spirit and my Moda and all that. And then I have half jelly rolls and full jelly rolls as well as more Tula fabric. And then I have more um, bundles like eighth bun fat eighths and six inch ones and some jelly rolls that I made as well on this shelf I could tell because that one's wrapped for me and then I have all of my charm packs back here they're kind of buried back there so that's all what's on that shelf that's kind of hidden um, projects that I done back there some mini wall hanging quilts uh, those are that's my giveaway container up in there so it has patterns in it to give away as well as I have a giveaway container here Ma, I got this at a yard sale. It's actually a quilt block on the pegboard, but I just keep all the fabric stores for the tri-state area on here. So these are all between Lake Havasu, uh, Long Arm Quilters in the area, Needles, uh, California, as well as Kingman, Arizona, and Bullhead City. And so what? These are fabric stores and Long Arm Quilters. I have my clock here, my golden scissors that I won. I have a TV back here that I don't use. <laughs> I keep my Quilted Hearts binding ease up here as well as a 10 inch layer cake and a ruler that I am doing a challenge with someone else to see what we can make with that. And then on this shelf back here is all the fabrics. They are bolted up on the magazine boards. This is a disaster usually back here because I just kind of, it's like my throw spot so I keep filming equipment. Uh, as well as more filming equipment, more filming equipment, tripod. Again, the fabrics are marked. If, the, if they're not marked, it's because I used them and I didn't put how much was left on it when I threw it back on the shelf. But they're mostly all marked with how much is on them, unless, again, if I used it. Then I shove kits up in here and bundles and so on and so forth. As much as I can shove where I can shove it, I have kits down here on the end as well. I have more kits in the garage also and this whole entire thing that it's on there's drawers under there that is receiving blankets that are in the drawer down there under here that's flannel um, I haven't used them I, I meant to make something with them and I haven't yet but I'll get to it then I have fat quarter bundles so let's move the tripod out of the way so I keep fat quarter bundles in here and this one has I forgot Oh, this is all fat quarters as well in here. Can you see in there? No. <laughs> it's a ton of fat quarters. Fat quarters in here that are batiks. These are my random um, width uh, of fabrics, but they're full length strips. And then that's my four inch tub of squares, which I'll get to that in the storage part. I do keep jobs right here. So things that, not that of course, but my jobs usually line up right here in bags of things that I'm needing to do. I usually just put them right there so that I can see them. These drawers over here keep junk, you know, bobbin cases and just rotary blades and a mixture, Velcro. Then I have some ribbon and buttons in case I need stuff like that. And then I have some embroidery floss and so on and so forth. Down here, this whole container right here is bag making. I was making the Tiffy bags and I put a whole pile of fabric inside of that to make those with. I have this cool lamp here that I never use, but it's actually really nice. See, found it in the garbage and it was perfect condition. It was just wobbly because they didn't have all these side things screwed in properly. 
So back here I have my daughter's. This is for one of her quilts. I have a Star Wars stuff, more uh, jelly rolls, layer cakes, books, um, camera equipment. Oh, I need to pull that out. Totally forgot. Uh, more books. And then down here are, this is a bag that I just made my daughter. Down here is books as well as all the custom rulers. So little tiny Dresden rulers and um, hexagon rulers. And those kind of things are all down here. Some equilateral triangles. Down here is pins, which I don't have to use much because I don't need to base it on the floor anymore. And then I gotta remember to pull that out. Remind me to pull out the camera box. <laughs> this shelf is the disaster shelf um, because there's so much stuff in the way. So up here I have red, white, and blue scraps in that one. Um, so Sunday finishes, like things I started on So Sunday and I need to finish. This whole thing is filled with jelly roll strip bundles as well as mixture junk. And then this is like indoor outdoor fabric in here as well as I've been throwing panels on top of it. This whole shelf is all panels. Everything on here is a panel to make a quilt with. Some of them have matching stuff to go with it. These fabrics right here are not quilting fabrics. These are more um, clothing and home decor type fabrics. That's why they're way out of the way over here. Here is projects that I have started and haven't finished. Like this is from 2016. It needs to be done. 2016, 2015, 2017. So I really need to get to the projects that are in there, but I just haven't. Um, this is uh, from another project from a client all in here. I just haven't finished the, this was the leftovers to make the throw pillows. I just never done it and they really don't care because they love their quilt. So it was just an extra thing that I was working on. Down on the bottom shelf is bolts of fabric, which are hard to see because they're way buried down there. They're flannel. These are flannel and brushed cotton bolts, as well as I have boxes under here. These are fabric that I worked for and I just kind of threw it under there for now. I was slowly going through it. This is stuff that people have mailed to me. I been they're all mixed now because I've been going through it by what size stuff is and putting it away and like you know organizing it that whole bin right there is clothing fabric so anything to make clothes and so on and so forth again I haven't got to it yet but sooner or later I will be making clothes uh, it's a goal it's a goal back here I keep fleece so it's kind of buried in here fleece all back here. Uh, I don't keep it out. Up there it's obvious that's mailing supplies for mailing out things that people get from me. <laughs> and then we're gonna skip the closet for a second and move to this side. So you haven't seen this side yet. Here is the chair that Scotty usually sits on when he's on the computer with you guys. I usually throw the shirts that I'm wearing for my videos on <laughs> the chair when I rotate through them. I keep, these are big pieces of cotton scraps. I keep them right here because, well, I, they're easy to grab for table runners and such. On the shelf though, let's move some of these so that you can see. Oh, let's throw these big, huge scraps over here. Down here, again, all of this is clothing fabric. So this is stretch knit and um, silky fabrics and like stuff to make skirts and so on and so forth. Again, down here is also same thing. It's all clothing fabric. I have a ton of it and I was going to keep it all in the garage, but I keep bags for my trash cans in here and so on. I'm just going to keep that pile there for now. Here's another bag with big scraps and shirts that I bought to embroider on. Haven't done it. Back here is a dusty shelf. Again, more clothing fabrics. Those are my daughter's though, so that because she wanted to make maxi dresses, so it's just sitting there. Then this is the jelly roll shelf. So I got a lot of jelly rolls from Tuesday morning, and then some I've ordered. But you can tell the ones that are Fabric Central are from Tuesday morning. So anything that says Fabric Central are Tuesday morning rolls. Then we got Benertex, and I liked. I have was obsessed with Benertex fabrics for a long time because I just like the way that they sew up. 
as well as more banner text, everything. Oh, we got some Robert Kaufman and uh, Boundless down here and some more from Tuesday morning. Again, you can see all that dust. That's a lot of dust. I don't get to uh, clean the dust up much. <laughs> Uh, I got a picture of my daughter there. A lamp that I'm not even sure is plugged in. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> I gave little uh, miniature quilts on the walls. They were like pot holders, but I just made them quilts. Back to the shelf. All my books are on one shelf, except for the couple that are over there. I keep all the books pretty much in the same spot because I do go through my books quite often and g gather ideas or the size of something all from books. I don't do magazines much, but I did get some sent to me, so I have been slowly reading through them. Here I keep bundles, and they're marked used because there's like one or two fat quarters that were cut into of all these bundles. So there's some back here as well. Here are fat quarters that come from the dollar store. So these are craft squares, and I just saved these for like little bags and pouches and things for like to make for children for donations. I keep them back here inside of a, you know, bag thing that I made. I got some serger thread because I didn't know how fast I was going to go through serger thread, but I guess you don't go through it that fast <laughs> if you don't use it. Um, hexies so I can learn to hand sew. I buy uh, the Thoughtless starch and I don't use it as often as I should but I have some things of it. Um, up here are quilt patterns and baby quilt patterns and so on. These are all other people patterns except for two books are mine. And then I keep my block magazines here and again this whole entire thing it's really long. I would pull it all out but everything would fall. It's a really long container and these are all just regular patterns. I keep them in there. And then I keep bags for projects. I store them in there. And then that's more shipping stuff and extra scissors as well as this has my hot glue gun in it. So there's all that. And then when I have company over, I do have an extra chair that folds out over there that we put on the opposite side of the desk, which we're skipping the closet for a second because the opposite side of the desk right here I pull this or, you know, these out and we put them on the outside of the desk right here. When someone comes over to sew, here is an old dilapidated computer that Scott uses on live streams. But in these drawers right here, this is my swipe drawer. So everything like leftover binding and strings before I turn them into strings and all that all ends up in this drawer and usually the binding gets rolled up and thrown in here too. There's extra blocks and pieced pieces in here. I call it my swipe drawer because I swipe it off the desk into the drawer and get it out of my face. <laughs> but it needs to be gone through again. I go through it like once every, I don't know, year. <laughs> and then below it are, these are less than a yard but more than a fat quarter cuts. A lot of these are like, I would have to say older prints. So, and then there's newer ones in here. You can tell, but you can see some of like the older ones that are probably from the eighties. So there's a lot of older stuff. And then down here, same thing. I even got Raggedy Ann fabric. Isn't that adorable? Um, so this is like a mixture of old and new, but this is less than a yard, more than a fat quarter. And then in this one, I have some bundles from Trolls to make a Trolls quilt, as well as more less than a yard, but more than a fat quarters. And I think under here are blocks or kits or something. I don't remember. Then down here, so it's less than a yard, more than a fat quarter. As you can tell, I'm running out of spaces to put those, but I pull from them all the time. And then down here is mixture threads and some binding that I never used. <gasps> I made a quilt and I meant to bind it. I did this twice now. So here's a quilt binding that I made and I never finished it. I never put the right binding on it. So I've been pulling from it for small projects. <laughs> so there's all that. We're gonna turn over here and go to the closet. 
So there is a box of all scraps, like little scraps. I got to go through it. Uh, this one is mixture scraps as well. And then this is more stuff that people have sent. I just haven't, I don't know what to do with some of this stuff. So this is like football fabric and the Star Wars one's going to go with the Star Wars stuff. But the football stuff, I don't play football or any of that kind of stuff. So I, I don't watch it either. So I don't know what to do with it yet, but I'll figure it out. Then I have baskets of scraps that are getting folded. I just haven't found a place for them. And then I have string scraps and a whole entire thing filled with notebooks because I scribble so much stuff down. Up here in the top of the closet, I have my Quilter's Dream battings. Um, I have more of it, but I don't keep it in the house. I keep it in the garage because it just overflows in here. Then all, even back there behind it, this is all bolts of fabric. I keep up there. I keep extra bolts for, again, the, the, anything that has more than five yards on it. Here is a whole stack shelf thing back here that's filled with old projects. Down there is like old panels that, um, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I do collect old fabrics. So I have a ton of old panels to make old, like, stuffed dolls and stuff. Here are like bags that I made and back there are table runners that I've made. So when I need a new table runner, I have them all back there. And just some stuff I started and never finished on live streams as well as what's in here, strings all in there. And then I think this next one is squares that I was cutting out of mask scraps. And then a quilt that I started and never finished again. And then jeans. Those are all jeans for bags. And then down there is my crumb. So all of my crumbs are in here. So if I want to make a crumb quilt, I have that. And then there's a bag of smaller batting scraps. All of the quilts that need to be quilted are literally hanging in here. So all this needs to be quilted. There's lots of them. Scott's shirt just hangs here, his Iron Man shirt, because he only wears it during videos. Uh, under here are sheets. Right here, this pile is sheets for backs of quilts. Then I have 108 fabrics right here in this stack, so I keep my 108s here, as well as there's a quilt top that needs to be... Actually, there's two quilt tops there that are just not hanging. And then I think there's a couple... No, there's not. I thought I put more sheets back there. Then, moving on, let's move that bag out of the way for a second, are these drawers. I just recently put them in here because I was running out of room, and you notice I swapped out the colors where they're supposed to be. But in here, as I've been trying to organize a little bit better, this is all fat quarter bundles, so when you buy a random bundle from like So Yeah, this is where I've been putting them and then or random fat quarters that come in things or fat quarters that people have sent me they're all in here just randomly except for some of them are in groupings of what they are so here was this fabric it's it's in grouping of what it is so i can make a project with just those if i wanted then the next one down here goes the storage and organization this whole drawer is five inch squares so I take the cardboards that come from fat quarters as well as five inch squares and I use them to separate. Let's pull this out if I can do it without making a disaster. I use them to separate cuts of five inch squares. So I cut all this myself. So there's thousands in here, thousands of five inch squares. So anytime I have uh, say a screw up cut or something with five inch squares, I can go into my bin and find a five inch square that matches what I'm doing and throw it in there. And I won't have to worry about not having the right fabric because I can just match something up. So that's what's in there. The bottom one is a disaster. Um, I have a whole pile of ribbon here, you know, for like tying quilts up and stuff when I send them out. Um, I kind of try to package my stuff really nicely. I have fabric in here. I haven't, you know, cleaned it all up. I've just been throwing it down in here. Let's get that to close all the way. 
we're gonna move to this side again I marked it and I used washi tape I put that it's fat quarters and then again over here is another bin of fat quarters except these ones some of them were bundles and or matching ones so like a whole set of matching fat quarters you know that were pre-matched from something as well as underneath the folded ones that are smaller these are fat quarters that I've cut from um, messed up yardage when I do my storage and organization stuff the next drawer down is jelly roll strips those were all donated to me and I plan to make something spectacular with them and then orphan blocks this whole drawer is filled with orphan blocks so that I could finally one of these days make an ugly orphan quilt so there's what's in all of that now let's move on to seeing what all this is back here so when it comes to storage and organization I'm telling you I got it all worked out <laughs> So those piles that I have shown you previously in this video that kind of sit right here like this sooner or later I press them and I cut them down this is what I do so I take a piece of fabric we're just going to use an example right here and I say what can I get from this well from the looks of it I can get a 10 inch square right off the bat and then maybe a string off the end right off the bat so there's a 10 inch square so I would cut a 10 inch square so when we talk about this kind of stuff and we move on to this organizational stuff we come here to this bin 10 inch squares so I cut whatever 10 inch squares I can get from something so if I can only get three 10 inch squares from the large piece of fabric I'll put them in here and I just stack them nicely in here so here's 10 inch squares and the piles that start all this again are these right here so I just take whatever's left from a project it goes into these bins that are on the underside of the desk on the back side so the side that you never really see in the videos it all sits right here after I'm done with a project and then I stack it all up throwing it in these bins and then I make what I can from it so again I start with 10 inch squares I get what I can out of that then I move on so I have piles like this so I have this bin right here these are going to be random width of fabric strips up here on the top and then I'm going to move that out of the way like they're selvage to selvage strip pieces of fabric but they're random widths and they need to be trimmed I trim them to like a, a decent size without wasting too much fabric but I have lots of this so these are strips right here that are with the fabric and this whole entire bin these are the length of the fabric or the width of the fabric from selvage to selvage and these are pieces that would be five inches or less so every single one of these I can get five inch squares from or less and there's you know quite a bit in here and I press them and fold them just right so that I can cut them down when I need usually selvage to selvage strips I do cut into two and a half inch strips that's my most biggest cut which is hiding under the desk and I'll probably get to that in the end of this video but there's that then I have these bins like this right here these are enough for almost a 10 inch square so these are all selvage to selvage widths but these are not a fat quarters worth so then since they're not a fat quarters worth I won't put them in my less than a yard more than a fat quarter drawer so these will actually be cut down into five inch ten inch squares whatever I can get from it and you can see right here if I didn't have the Christmas fabric thrown on top this whole thing is filled okay so I fill the bins and then I move on to the next stage once they're in the bin so let's move the bin out of the way um, down here I also have what else do I have down here I'm, I'm literally showing you guys all of this oh so here is all the leftovers from the Dresden sew-along 
Yep, so this is all the Dresden Sew Along leftovers for me to make a second quilt from that. So we're just gonna move that out of the way. I know I'm literally like doing this and showing you at the same time. So, as you can see on this shelf, and I'm gonna pan it down, there are bins. All these white topped bins. Now I'm going to in individually take them out so that I can show you what all these bins are. So, we start out with, we're gonna go right here, bin number one, and I have bundles and stuff that are thrown on top of here. Bin number one, these are all marked. This, focus, is my one inch bin. So, one inch squares don't take up a lot of space, but as you can see, there's a ton in here. And I don't put them by color, I just throw them in here. So these are all one inch squares, and you can see by my walls that those one inch squares get used to make mini quilts. I love to piece one inch squares together when I'm not doing other projects. So, we start out with one inch. Next size we move to, and they're kind of moved around because I've been using them. Next size is one and a half. So after I cut what I can from these strips, I also cut from, say, a piece of fabric, again, like this. Whatever I can cut from it, I cut from it from one inch, 10 inch. So 10 down to one. So if I can get one inch squares, they'll go in the one inch bin. If I can get one and a half inch squares, they go in this bin. You never know when you need a fill of a one and a half inch square. So that's this. So I trim my square, I trim everything down to sizes and I fill them into these bins. So the next size I go to, I do have some two inch ones, but I really don't have a bin for them and I really don't focus on cutting two inch. Although I should because I have every other number between. So the next one is two and a half inch. So in here is, I for my 25 patch block series, I cut an enormous amount and I still can make tons of other stuff. So two and a half inches and it was so full that I'm throwing them on top now. Now I have, I, I'm not gonna pull them all out, but not just one, not two, not three, but I actually have four bins of two and a half inch squares that are all cut. The fourth bin is actually solids. So all that's left over from all the solid fabrics that I use is my back, background fabrics or whatever. They get cut down into two and a half inch squares and I stick them in the solid bin. Then we move on to this one right here. So sometimes I get two and a half inch strips as you guys saw in my closet there is a bin plum full of two and a half inch strips those aren't full length salvage to salvage strips so I was sticking them in here but now they're not going to stay in here so these are not full widths of fabric of two and a half inch strips I'm actually going to move these over there so that something else, a different number, can go into this bin. Maybe two inch squares can finally go in something. So there's that. I also have this bin. So I have to transfer as I'm doing this. <laughs> this one is one and a half inch strips by full length of the fabric. So salvage to salvage, this is one and a half inch strips. Again, when I'm cutting from these, the salvage to salvage ones, whatever is left over, if I can get a one and a half inch strip, that will go in this bin. What can you do with one and a half inch strips? I mean, a lot you can do with any of these strips. So we have our one inch strip, I mean one and a half inch strip bin. I also have full salvage to salvage length, one and a half inch strip of solids. So I keep my prints, which come from these cuts, you know, these were just leftovers that either people send me or what I have left from cutting an allowable amount for a video. And that goes, you know, once they're cut up, if I can get a one and a half inch strip, it'll go in either a color 
or printed bin or a solid bin. Then I have a bin back here. I also have mailing stuff back here too. That's what you see in this stuff right here. This bin right here is leftover binding. So the leftover binding bin got way too full and I think I'm gonna move them to a different box because these shoe boxes aren't, I mean, they do fit a lot, obviously, but totally get overflown because I'll, there's more leftover binding in the drawer under the desk. So I have a leftover binding bin. And then we move on to, I'm just going to tell you, in these bins, so two and a half inch, I go one inch, one and a half inch, and then I have some two inch. I just don't have a bin for them and then two and a half inch. Then I go to three and three and a half inch, four, which is in, hold on, right here under this. So four inch strips do not, four inch squares don't fit inside these bins. So it goes up to three and a half. So four inch goes in here. I think these are, yeah, these are the four inch ones. So it's mixed of solids and prints. These, this bin sits, because it's bigger, sits over underneath the big long area right here. So let me put that away. And then from four inch, I don't do, oh no, I do have four and a half inch squares. I do have four and a half inch right here. Four and a half inch. They're just laid sideways though, but I had way more four inch. Then I go to five inch. Then I skip all the numbers in between and I have an eight and a half inch bin. Somewhere, 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 right here. I have a eight and a half inch bin. They kind of just get rolled in half in here. I don't cut eight and a half inch much, but an eight and a half inch square can be used for many things again. So definitely, there we go, stay, stay. So I definitely have the space for, you know, every size. My three and a half inch bin is actually in my bedroom because I've been using it for hand sewing. <laughs> so I go, again, I whatever I can get from all this, and all the stuff that people send me, if it's not a fat quarter, and it's less than a fat quarter, or it's less than half a yard, but it's got some cuts into it so I can't get a fat quarter, I cut to what size I can get. I would show you how I do that, but I don't have that much time to sit and cut fabric. Maybe we can do that on a live stream or something. <laughs> so, one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, two and a half inch, three inch, three and a half inch, four inch, four and a half inch, five inch, skip, eight and a half inch, and then skip to 10 inch. Those are the cuts I make for all these containers back here. And then on the bottom, so that you can't see, let's pan down there. There is a shelf down on the bottom that has the mixture ones in it. Ooh, let's get that to stay straight. I am using a new camera for this. So down here, I have fat quarters in these bins. So these are like children's prints, fat quarters. And I have one that has half yard cuts. I have fat quarters. These are fat quarters that I make myself. And then I also have fat quarters that are, where are they? Panels, like a, a panel that was on a fat quarter. Um, I have a couple of those. I don't want to have to dig any more out, but that's what I do. So the bins that are behind that you don't ever see in filming behind the desk, those bins get organized down. I press it and I trim everything up. I put my salvage to salvage cuts on size in these bins. And when I feel like it in the middle of the night, when I can't sleep, I come in here and I cut fabric again, and then it goes bigger pieces. So if I can get a 10 inch squares, I will cut 10 inch squares two and a half inch strips, which I'll show you that bin in a minute because it's going to take a second to pull it out. But uh, strip wise, I cut 
one and a half inch full length strips and two and a half inch full length strips and then I have my random width strips. So let me show you a random width strip bin real quick. And don't mind that sound, it sounds like a helicopter is over the house. Or a big truck or something. It's very loud. All right, here is my random width of fabric bin. And when I say random width, it can be a three and a quarter inch piece. It could be a one and three quarters inch piece. It can be a two and a quarter inch piece. It is all literally in there. Anything that's two and a half actually goes in two and a half. Anything that's one and a half goes in one and a half. But all those in between sizes, that last piece of fabric, these are actually perfect for making string quilts. So just know I also, whatever's left from say this one, if I can get two, two and a half inch strips from this piece of fabric, whatever's left over, if it's bigger than an inch, one inch or bigger, I will cut that random with the fabric from it. And I use these for string quilts. So there's that. All right, so let's move on to where I keep my jelly rolls and you're gonna be super, my homemade jelly roll strips. I call them jelly roll strips or two and a half inch strips or whatever you wanna call them. Let's move on to that. So this is a hard one to get to. Down under there. Okay, so I moved my projects out of the way. Down under, 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 there is a bin. We're gonna put you right here, just like that. And I am going to tip you down to see the bin. So we're going to come down here. <laughs> this is ready. Oh, it's still going. It's still going. This is one of those under the box bins. We're going to pull it all the way out. We're going to open this up. And then I'm going to pan the camera down for you to see. This whole entire bin, all two and a half inch strips. These are salvage to salvage, end to end. And as you can see, it goes really deep. So this is two and a half inch strips I make myself. They're easy to grab when I need binding for something because sometimes there is like five of a strip in here. So here's a stripe and there's at least nine strips there. You know what I mean? So this can be used for anything. Say there was a ugly color that you didn't like in a jelly roll. I can go in here and pull out something that I like instead. So these are all prints and then oops there's a couple miscellaneous solids that ended up on that end. So there's some solids down there. But this whole entire bin and for depth, I'll show you, it's that deep. That's right. I have a bin plumb full of two and a half inch strips, guys. Like literally a full bin. I gotta put it away now. So there we have it guys <laughs> so that's my room tour slash how I store and organize everything like literally I'm getting there it's gonna be a lot better once I have when my son moves out I'll have that whole room that's on the other side of this wall to have as a fabric room and I'm definitely going to paint first and uh, get some nice shelves and organize it a lot better but I'm also not gonna fill it with fabric it's definitely going to be nicely organized and I'll have a bed in there so that I can have company still cuz you know I don't really need two full rooms of quilting related everything so it's definitely gonna have a dual use in that room but it'll be fabric over there and then I'll keep you know bundles and cute fabrics on this side as well but this room will be definitely organized and I want to paint in here as well once everything moves out, you know, get all these shelving units out. This room will be for filming and creating only, which will probably make it a lot easier. 
<laughs> and it'll be a lot more organized. But I am not done yet. Let's go to the last of my area. But it's not in this room. So there's still more spaces that I keep things and have things quilting related in this house. So let's move on to that. So let's exit this room now. Open the door. Leave the room because we are going on a trip to the other space. So as we walk out of that room, we go to the living room where more magic happens. Let's take a look at what we have. So when you come out into the living room, this is what you see, a kitty cat. <laughs> this is my long arm. It is a King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition. I think the special edition is that it's a bigger screen than most and I have a rear screen on it, but we'll look into that. So over here, I keep a stool. This is my machine. It's on a 12 foot frame, by the way. And then over here, I keep my cart of all the stuff to take the machine apart, some chalks, some extra bobbins. I emptied this one out mainly and just left these Gutemann threads in there. And then down here, I keep rulers and more machine stuff. And then all of my quilting rulers are inside of here. And then I keep my speakers so I can have some music playing. And I have some pins, but I don't pin anymore. I have um, red snappers in my machine. Underneath here is more storage, so all the bolts of fabric fill the whole thing under here. That's a roll of batting. I keep it covered so that Mr. Kitty doesn't get his hair woven into the batting, but he could care less that it's even there. He just likes to lay on my anti-fatigue mats. Um, just so that you guys can see, my living room has been condensed to that section over there. The rest of it is this. So just as a general idea. And that's the dining room over there. So this pretty much takes up the whole living room. So if we go back here, you can see from one end to the other is all fabric. These drawers right here this is all my dark glide threads. I mainly use glide thread for long arming. This is all my light threads, so all the colors that are more lighter and pastel like. Down here, I keep my glow threads. They, they don't glow in the dark, they glow under black light. And then little drawings of things that I've drawn up for pantos, and then a real panto. <laughs> Then over here, I keep the cotton threads and extra bobbin cases and the wheels that came off of this. So these are the cotton threads. I don't have very many of them. Then I have more cotton threads mixed with all my variegated. So variegated is color changing. Um, I use quite a few different ones. Omni by Superior, Harmony, as well as Affinity. And then I have my big Superior thread spools. And then down here is all of my isocord. Every last bit of this is all isocord down here. Right here is the cat's quilt. He loves to lay back here. So he messes this up and just he'll lay himself into it and fold himself up. On the back, I keep my bobbins. Oops, I kept that open. That was supposed to be closed. I try to keep the dust off of all this. This is gets more dusted than my bedroom. This is the most taken care of machine in this whole house. <laughs> Um, I have all the bobbins that I, I wind my own and I keep them in these containers. So I throw them in here when I have leftovers. And then when I'm working on something, I throw them right here, which I am currently getting ready to. All my red snappers sit back here as well as a ruler in case I need it for anything. The cords, uh, they used to be stuck to the ground, but now they're just flat, so that's good. And then I keep my journal back here of all the quilts that I've quilted on this machine only. This is just this machine. There's seven pages, eight pages of that. And then I have some quilting. This is just only for machine quilting books right here. I keep those back here. 
as well as paper and pencil. So in case I say, oh, I want to quilt hearts that I draw it on the paper <laughs> until I know what I'm doing. So there all that is. On the wall, I do keep, that was my first paper pieced block. Um, I lost all my points on it, <laughs> but that's my first paper pieced block. And then that is my black, white, and gray Dresden that I showed you guys the drawer with the leftover pieces. And this is a bigger version of what I call the block on my wall because for many years people said, what's that block on your wall? What's that block? Well, that was the bigger version because it was made with tiny little scraps. But that's not it. Other than a kitty cat. Hi, kitty. He says, oh, pet me, mama. Anyway, moving on over to here, I now have my embroidery machine that I won. So I actually haven't even unboxed this box yet. That's the free motion kit. But I have the embroidery machine over here. This little cup thing, this is a single needle, so it still has four spools up here, but I don't use them, so not all of them, because I only use one color at a time. I kept, I took a Dixie cup and I cut it, and then I stuck it over this thing right here. I stuck it a hole in the bottom and put it over this, and then I put all my scissors and marking tools in there. This is a disaster. This is probably the least organized area. Under here is all the the two hoops, not all the hoops, and then all of the uh, stabilizer stuff. In this drawer is stabilizer and then the scrap stabilizers. And then this drawer, these are kind of in color order. So these are all the pinks, oranges, purples, and then the cord for the computer, for the embroidery machine in the computer. And then down here is all the greens, blues, grays, browns and the bobbin things which i plan to make sure it is over every single spool right now it's only on some of them but little by little i'm putting them on every spool right here is more that was all polyester thread this is rayon thread in this container and there's stuff falling because i have not very organized back here oh i need to hunt that down because that's all the parts to this machine so that's this area literally so until i have a new table for it as you can tell this is only a couch height table so we have to kneel down or we bring the stool over here to sit but right now this is what we work with so panning back around that's the last of the space so there that is so that is everything i'm pretty sure i covered it all <laughs> that was a lot so i have this space in here, this is a 10 by 11 room. No, it's 11 by 12 because it wasn't big enough for the long arm to fit in here because it needed a little bit more than 12 feet. That's right, it's 11 by 12. So this is an 11 by 12 room and then I have the long arm in the living room and the embroidery machine in the living room, which I wanted to have in here over where the chair sits, where that chair is. I wanted to put it there, but we do need that extra chair in here for during live streams so Scott can sit in here and help um, when possible. So that, it's kind of exploded, but when my son moves out, like I said, I'll have that room for fabric. So this will get a little bit more cleaned up. I am very OCD. This is killing me to be in this much of a disaster. It was very, very clean for the longest time. My goal is honestly, once the fabric goes over there, and I really want to do this part now, I want to move my desk from the position that it's in now over about two feet that way towards that side, towards the door, away from this wall, because I want to be able to put the camera equipment and things on this side without feeling like I'm really stuck in a corner. Because when I film right now, 90% of when you guys see filming from the, the sewing machine on pre-filmed videos, not my live streams, but the pre-filmed ones, that camera is literally right next to me and it kind of gets in the way. And then during live streams, um, if you guys didn't notice, I have this camera right here that also points at the sewing machine, but during live streams, I hit it. it. It, I bump it with my elbow all the time. And now I have a new camera here that I'm actually filming from right now. 
and mount wise I'm still trying to figure it out it is on a mount though right now it's just on a little mount I need a bigger tripod for it because the current tripods don't have the attachment for it and I can't find it uh, so there's just lots going on here but I really hope this helped you video wise on well, behind the scenes of Tiffany's quilting life as well as how I organize the cuts that I make from one inch to ten inch and then I make my own fat quarters as well as I keep everything super organized when I can not a lot of it right now is in big piles because I've been slowly working on it with my legs um, I have MS so I have leg problems with my nerves all the time so with that lately I've kind of not been coming in here in the middle of the night for the past like month now and I've been kind of just ignoring all the piles of stuff that I have behind the machine and over to the side by the closet so yeah this is my mess so <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support and for all of you who send me things. Thank you so much for that because without all that fabric I wouldn't be able to create all these lovely videos with quilt tops that I show you how to make or quilts that I quilt for you guys. So thank you so much everybody for everything that you do. Um, that's all I have. I'm gonna move on to cleaning up the mess I currently made by pulling everything out to show you guys so thank you for watching until next time don't forget to subscribe if you're new like my videos and share them with your quilty friends and I will see you in my next video oh and if you could in the comments below tell me what you think of this video quality because this is a new camera and I now have to edit the sound for it because my sound does not work with this either <laughs> so let me know in the comments if you like the video quality and if it's better if the sound is good so on and so forth I, I would really appreciate the feedback to know this new devices are working good and so on and so forth so thank you very much and I'll see you next video bye